Folks, thanks for coming on the line with us today. My name is John Dubos with Premier Senior Benefits, and today we'll be discussing in our ongoing series of Medicare Basics the coordination of benefits within the Medicare program. This PowerPoint has been developed and approved by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and is, portion, is a portion of their 2017 National Training Program. Today we'll discuss the coordination of benefits as an overview, speak to some specifics on health coverage coordination, look to explain the Medicare Part D coordination of benefits, and give you a quick peek at a resource guide and some acronyms. Today's session should help us explain health and drug coverage coordination, help determine who pays first, and help identify where to get more information. The coordination of benefits overview itself will give us a discussion as to the coordination of benefits with Medicare as the primary carrier or primary payer and Medicare as the secondary payer. It's important to note that when we discuss coordination of benefits that each type of health insurance coverage is called a payer. And when there's more than one payer, coordination of benefits rules, they decide which payer pays first. There may be primary and secondary payers, and in some cases, there may also be a third payer. When does Medicare pay? It may be the primary payer in the absence of any other type of primary insurance. Medicare may be the secondary payer when you have other coverage that must pay first, where Medicare makes a secondary payment if appropriate, and Medicare may not pay for any services or items other health insurance is responsible for paying for. When Medicare is the primary payer, well, that is a case when Medicare is your only insurance or if your other source of coverage is a Medigap plan, a Medicare supplement insurance program, Medicaid, retiree programs, the Indian Health Service, Veterans Benefits, TRICARE for Life, or the Consolidated On the Bus Budget Reconciliation Act, COBRA, continuation coverage. The exception for this is the 30-month coordination period for people with end-stage renal disease. Medicare is a secondary payer when Medicare isn't responsible for paying a claim first, when legislation protects the Medicare trust funds, and when it helps ensure that Medicare doesn't pay when another insurer should pay first. This program saves Medicare about $9 billion a year, and the claims are processed by the insurances when that happens when the claims are processed by insurances primary to Medicare. When you deal with the Benefits Coordination and Recovery Center, this is a situation where Medicare as a secondary player claims an investigation and the contractor needs to learn about the other coverages and identify which is primary. This reports pending liability, no fault insurance or workers compensation cases and it ensures that Medicare gets repaid for any conditional payments that may be made. A little knowledge check, when does Medicare pay for claims? When Medicare may pay primary or secondary, Medicare may not pay at all, both A and B are true, or Medicare is always the primary payer. Both A and B are true, where Medicare may pay primarily or secondarily, or Medicare may not pay at all. When we look at some of the intricacies of health coverage coordination, let's look at Medicare in the marketplace. Consider some important considerations, identify the appropriate payers, and determine who pays first. When you deal with Medicare in the marketplace, it's important to note that Medicare isn't part of the health insurance marketplace. And if you have Medicare Part A, you're considered covered. It doesn't matter how you get Medicare, whether it's through the original Medicare program or Medicare Advantage plan, like a health maintenance organization or prefer, for preferred provider organization, you need to contact the marketplace and end any subsidies, such as the advanced premium tax credits or cost sharing reductions which are being paid on your behalf. If you have Medicare, it's illegal for someone to knowingly sell you a marketplace plan. And if you may have a qualified health plan, a QHP through marketplace, 
and Medicare at the same time only if you signed up for that QHP before you had Medicare. When you look for coordination between Medicare and the marketplace, generally there's no coordination of the benefits between a marketplace qualified health plan, a QHP and Medicare. The exception is unless you're enrolled in an employer-sponsored small business health options program, a SHOP plan. QHPs are not secondary insurance to Medicare and you have to be careful because it may cause you to pay a lifetime Part B penalty if you don't enroll in Part B during your Medicare initial enrollment period unless you are enrolled in an employer-sponsored shop plan. If you have to pay a premium for Medicare Part A, you can drop Medicare and enroll in a marketplace QHP with subsidies if you are otherwise eligible. Some important considerations for retiree coverage. Consider that most retiree plans offer generous medical and prescription drug coverage for the entire family and an employer union must disclose how its plans work with Medicare drug coverage. It's important to talk with your benefits administrator for more information. If you lose your credible prescription drug coverage, you have 63 days to enroll in a Medicare Part D plan without penalty. The people who drop retiree drug coverage may lose other health coverage, not be able to get it back, and may cause family members to lose their coverage as well. There are a number of possible health claims payers. It may be Medicare, it might be no-fault insurance or liability insurance, it might be workers' compensation, the federal black lung benefits program, COBRA, a retiree group health plan, VA benefits, TRICARE for Life, or an employer group health plan. These employer group health plans are coverage that are offered to employers and unions, and they are offered by those organizations to current employees, spouses, family members. Those employees may also be retired and have that coverage as a retiree with their spouse and family members covered as well. It's important to note that retiree coverage may be employer-based Medicare Part C or Part D plans. This includes federal employee health benefits programs, and it may be a fee-for-service plan or a managed care program. Employees can usually choose to keep or reject such plans, and businesses with 50 or fewer employees can offer small business health option program plans. Some important things to note about employer group health plans. If you are 65 or older and have retiree coverage, Medicare will pay first as long as you don't have excluding conditions such as black lung or others that are specified in the presentation coming up. If you are 65 or older with employee group health plans and it is available through current employment, either yours or your spouse, it's a situation where Medicare will pay first if the employer has less than 20 employees. If you are under 65 with a disability and have group coverage through a current employment, yours or a family member's, Medicare will pay first if the employer has less than 100 employees. If you are eligible for Medicare because of end-stage renal, renal disease and you have group coverage, Medicare then pays first when the 30-month coordination period ends or if you've had Medicare primarily before you were diagnosed with end-stage renal disease. When you deal with non-group health plans, Medicare doesn't normally pay for services when the diagnosis indicates that other insurers may provide coverage, including auto accidents, illnesses due to mining, the federal black lung benefits program, if there's a third party liability, or if it's a work injury or illness covered under workers' compensation. When dealing with no fault insurance, this normally includes automobile insurance, homeowner's insurance or commercial insurance plans and it pays regardless of who's at fault. Medicare in this circumstance would be secondarily the payer and Medicare may not make a conditional payment if the payment is not paid within 120 days or if you don't and you don't have to use your own money to pay the bill or it must be repaid when the claim is resolved by the primary payer. 
when you deal with certain types of liability insurance, this protects against certain claims such as negligence, inappropriate action or inaction, and Medicare is the secondary payer, where the providers must attempt to collect before billing Medicare, and Medicare may make a conditional payment, and that happens if the liability insurer doesn't pay promptly within 120 days. This payment must be repaid when the claim is resolved by the primary payer. When dealing with workers' compensation, Medicare won't pay for health care related claims for workers' compensation claims. And if the workers' compensation claim is denied, then the claim may be filed for Medicare payment. Workers' compensation claims can be resolved by settlements, judgments, awards, and other payments. When you deal with workers' compensation Medicare set-aside arrangement programs, WCMSA programs, these are funds that are set aside to pay for future medical or prescription drug services. These funds must be used for the injury, illness, or disease covered by workers' compensation. They can only be used for Medicare's covered services, and Medicare pays for the Medicare covered services after these funds are used up. The Federal Black Lung Benefits Program covers lung disease and conditions caused by coal mining, and the services under this program are considered work and workers' compensation claims and are not covered by Medicare. This is where you can find additional uh, information through the 1-800-638-7072 number or the number for the hearing impaired at 1-877-889-8629. When you deal with COBRA, you're working with a situation that requires employers with 20 or more employees to let those employees and dependents keep health coverage under certain conditions. This allows certain former employees, retirees, spouses, former spouses, and dependent children the right to temporary continuation of health coverage at group rates. This coverage is only available when coverage is lost due to specific certain events. And it's generally for an 18-month period, but can be longer in certain circumstances. In this circumstance, the person involved must pay the entire insurance premium. Special considerations under COBRA. If you are 65 or older or have a disability and have COBRA continuation coverage, Medicare will pay first in most cases. If you have COBRA continuation coverage and are eligible for Medicare because of end-stage renal disease, Medicare then pays first when your 30-month coordination period ends. When we deal with Veterans Affairs or VA coverage, if you have Medicare and VA benefits, you can get treatment under either program. Medicare pays when you choose to get your benefits from Medicare. And to receive services under VA benefits, you must get your health care at a VA facility or have the VA authorize or agree to pay for services in a non-VA facility. With TRICARE for Life coverage, military retirement, oh, pardon me, military retiree coverage for services covered by Medicare and TRICARE for Life in these circumstances, Medicare pays first and TRICARE for Life pays the remainder. For services covered by TRICARE for Life but not Medicare, TRICARE for Life will pay first and Medicare pays nothing. If you receive services that you get in a military hospital or other federal provider, TRICARE for Life would pay first and Medicare generally pays nothing. A knowledge check. If you're 65 or older and have employer group health plan coverage through your current employer, Medicare pays first when your employer has more than 30 employees, less than 20 employees, 50 or more employees, 100 or more employees. It is less than 20 employees. Another question, Medicare is usually the secondary payer for claims that involve no fault insurance. Is this true or false? It is true. Let's now deal the Medicare Part D coordination of benefits programs and these are coordination of prescription drug benefits where there are other possible payers and when Medicare Part D pays first. These coordination of benefits ensure that there's proper payment by Medicare Part D plans and that the Medicare Part D plan usually pays 
as primary. If Medicare is a secondary payer, the Medicare Part D plan will deny primary claims and that Part D plan may make a conditional payment to ease the burden on the enrollee and make certain that Medicare is reimbursed. When you look at possible drug coverage payers, you have a number of categories. If you're dealing with employer group health plans, this may consider may con consider also retiree plans, active employment programs, or COBRA programs. If you deal with the state, it could include Medicaid programs, state pharmaceutical assistance programs, SHIP programs, or workers' compensation. Overall, in the federal picture, you can deal with Medicare Part A or Part B. It could be paid by the Federal Black Lung Program, the Indian Health Service, by Veterans Affairs, by TRICARE for Life, or through the AIDS Drug Assistance Programs. There are other payers as well, and that includes no-fault liability payers, patients, patient assistance programs, and charities. There are certain important retiree drug coverage considerations, and that includes the fact that most retiree plans offer generous coverage for the entire family, and the employer or union must disclose how the plan works with Medicare drug coverage. It's important that you talk to your benefits administrator for more information. If you lose your creditable prescription drug coverage, you will get a special enrollment period, a SEP, and that SEP begins with notification of the loss of the creditable coverage, and it ends either two months after the notification or two months after the end of coverage, whichever is later. For the folks who drop retiree drug coverage, they might lose other health coverage, might not be able to get it back, and it can cause family members to lose their coverage as well. So some different plan types and situations and when Medicare pays first for medically necessary Part D covered prescriptions. If you're dealing with an employer health plan and you're 65 or older and have retiree coverage, Part D pays first. If you're 65 or older with group health coverage through current employment, either yours or your spouse's, Part D pays first if the employer has less than 20 employees. If you are under 65 with a disability and have group coverage through current employment, either yours or a family member's, Part D pays first if the employer has less than 100 employees. If you're eligible for Medicare due to an end-stage renal disease situation and you have group coverage, Part D pays first when the 30-month coordination period ends or if you've had Medicare before you had ESRD. When you deal with COBRA, and you're 65 or older and have a disability and have COBRA continuation coverage, Part D pays first in most cases. If you have COBRA continuation coverage and are eligible for Medicare because of end-stage renal disease, Part D pays first when your 30-month coordination period ends. Additional circumstances, if you're covered by workers' compensation, Part D pays first for prescriptions other than those that for the job-related illness or injury. Medicare may make a conditional payment. If the program you're on is a manufacturer-sponsored patient assistance program and you get help through that program, Medicare Part D pays first. If you're receiving help from a charity, Medicare Part D will pay first. And if you're covered by no-fault liability coverage, such as for a auto accident, injury in a public place, or a malpractice, Part D pays first for prescriptions covered by Part D not related to that accident or injury. A little knowledge check. For people covered by Medicare and full Medicaid benefits who have a medical issue that's covered by workers' compensation insurance, Medicare, oh, pardon me, Medicaid pays for all prescriptions. Medicare pays for prescriptions other than those for the job-related injury or illness. Medicare pays for all prescriptions. Or Medicaid pays for all prescriptions other than those for the job-related injury or illness. In this circumstance, Medicare is going to pay for prescriptions other than those for the job-related injury or illness. 
You have a guide here for coordination of benefits and includes information for CMS, the Benefits Coordination and Recovery Center, the U.S. Department of Labor, the Office of Personnel Management for federal employees. You have assistance or guidance to the rxassist.org program through the Patient Assistance Program Center, information on Medicare and TRICARE, and TRICARE, and on the VA, and on the Black Lung Program. Some additional benefits or, or guides that can be helpful to you include the Medicare and You Handbook, your Medicare Benefits Book, Medicare and Other Benefits, your guide as to who pays first, and these are available at the Medicare.gov website under the Publications section, and you can order multiple copies at the productordering.cms.hhs.gov website. These are available only to partners that have registered their organization. A number of acronyms are available here. These are fairly standard within Medicare. And keep in mind that this training is provided by and available through the CMS National Training Program through the website listed at cms.gov at the Outreach and Education section, subsection Training, subsection CMS National Training Program. You can also follow uh, CMS on Twitter and stay connected by contacting the government through the training email listed here. That said, we want to thank you for coming online with us today and to learning more about the coordination of benefits available through Medicare and other programs, and we look forward to visiting with you down the road.